the reason I used inquiry in today's lesson is because the subject matter mutations, I feel, is that something my students have a lot of experiences with, whether or not they know it. So I really wanted to get the kids thinking about what they already know, about what they see in the real world, and really draw from those experiences. And then after that, I was able to go ahead and give some more formal vocabulary to what they already know. And so that's why I use it. I also think that using inquiry first lets me see what the kids are thinking without me having to just ask them questions all the time. So it's a good way for them to be able to talk to each other and see what they know and also see if there's any misconceptions that I can address. Also, you'll notice that there's gradual release while the kids are working, so they're doing productive group work. I'm able to go around and give them some guided instruction, um, probe, ask questions, see what they know, see what they're thinking without giving them answers, so still following that inquiry model. Our purpose is to characterize mutations that cause changes in phenotypes, or like you just reminded me, phenotype is a physical characteristic. So we will accomplish that today um, with something called mutation stations. And that's where you're going to be going up to different stations and looking at different examples of mutations. Next, we'll explain what you observed in Cornell Notes. And then finally, you'll be making conclusions based on what you gained from your Cornell Notes and adding it to what you already observed in your mutation stations. You're going to go around and see different cards. On each card, you, will, you might see the following. Okay, there are two different columns. In one column, you'll have a phenotype. In another column, you'll have a different phenotype. So those are phenotypes A and B. And it's telling me to focus on the eye color, because it says eye color A, eye color B. You'll also see that there are different protein sequences. Okay, so what are those things that make up the proteins? What is methionine an example of? Alanine. What are those called? The monomers of proteins. Above that, you'll see the mRNA sequence. That codes for those amino acids. And then you'll also see the DNA sequence. At each station, you will make your I notice or your observations, I wonder or your questions about each station. And then what do you notice about the shape of A versus the shape of B? Uh, the, shape, the shape of A, they're like circles. They're like circles, they're round? And the other one's like, different. they look like old, like different type of shapes. Yeah, good. So this one, see, this one might be kind of like elongated. Are any of these perfect circles? Mm -hmm. No. No, okay. Not, no. Not really. So you, in your I notice section, you might go ahead and write that. I notice the blood cells in A are round, while the blood cells in B kind of stretched out or elongated. I think they're famous. Isn't it George Lopez? Well, I think um, the African American right. does the sports talker on his sports Okay, so he's famous a famous boxer. Yeah. Muhammad Ali. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, so this is Muhammad Ali. And this is, I don't know if you've ever seen Back to the Future, but Michael J. Fox. Okay. And so are we focusing on how these people look? Yes. In our description? But wait, I thought we were looking at central nervous system. That's so, part of it. So the clue is, is that something going on here, some sort of mutation, is caused by a central nervous system disorder. So if you know who these two people are, there's a, there's a famous, they share something in co common, some sort of genetic disorder. Any ideas? Genetic disorder, so it's Don't they twitch? a mutation? So they do, ha yeah, have kind of shakes. Okay, so I'm not expecting that you necessarily know the name, but what I want you to discover is what's different about these proteins. So do we see any differences? Which they have Tourette's? Not Tourette's. I'll t I'll, we'll go ahead and talk about that after this. But what do you see is different about the proteins? They have a double glutamine. Glutamine. Is, yeah, there's an extra glutamine for the people with the central nervous system B. So make sure you wrote that in your I notice. Is in the I predict section, predict which one, A or B, you think is the mutant version. Luis, give me one thing you noticed. Um, um, the A has a protein. Okay, so more, well let's see, let's count the amino acids, okay? In A, I have one, two, three, four, five amino acids. In B, I have one, two, three, four, five amino acids as well. So I don't think that's different. Is there something else that's different about the amino acids though? 
Angela? Um, the fourth amino acid's different. Okay, so here in A, I have glutamic acid, but in B, I have valine. So if I go to the codons, that's where you should be able to see a difference. The A, oh, the a, a, a U versus the TA. Okay, excellent. In the mRNA sequence, I have GAG. For B, I have GUG, and that all goes back to the DNA. Okay, so that means here, for A, I have a T in the uh, DNA sequence, whereas here, I have an A. So there is some sort of change. Is there another difference in amino acids? Violetta, what do you see? Threonine, excellent. Here, whereas alanine in A. So in this case, we have two amino acids that are different. And that is caused by a change in the DNA. Did we accomplish our purpose? See how different mutations can cause changes in phenotypes? Yeah. Excellent. What I would like to do now is switch gears, go to some Cornell notes to give you some more scientific terms to characterize what these exact mutations are. What are mutations? And I will model the questions and style on the board for you. And to be honest, my definition really is no different than what you gave me in your quick write. Yes. Okay, so mutations are changes in the nucleotide sequence of the DNA. So you told me mutations are changes in DNA. That really is no different than what I'm saying, except I'm telling you that it's specifically just one little nucleotide change can cause a mutation. We're going to learn about three specific gene mutations. So to give you kind of a, a picture of what's coming up, you can have mutations in just a gene, or you can have chromosomal mutations. From our examples, did we have a chromosome mutation at one of our stations? Yes. Yeah. yeah, do you remember which one? X. Good. Uh, station, six. station six. So the triple X, that was a chromo chromosomal mutation. How was that a chromosomal mutation? What was different? Okay, uh, an extra. So adding an extra chromosome would result in a chromosomal mutation. Okay, another option is you could change the structure of the chromosome. One that I think most of you have heard of are people who are born with Down syndrome. They have a chromosomal mutation where they have an extra 21st chromosome. Okay, so instead of having three X's like you saw in the triple X syndrome, they would have three of the 21st. So that's kind of the classic example. You will probably need your mutation Cornell notes to finish this. At your desk, you should have all six station cards with you. So station one through six are at your desk. Based on your observations, and your predictions. And now what you have the information from your Cornell notes, I would like you to write, I know, and tell me which mutation they have. Is it a point mutation, a deletion, an insertion, or a chromosomal?